Nice to be here again. The subject that I'd like to discuss over here today actually is um, a little bit of an interesting subject. This week, somebody told me a story that the story got me thinking. This is a true story. And I ask you your opinion. What do you think about what the guy said? Then we'll put it into the Parsha and we'll have a little bit of an understanding. This man was someplace in mid-America in a hospital and um, his wife was critically ill and it was, there was there a patient long-term in mid-America, a place where they don't have much Jews over there. And there was an aristocratic, secular, Gentile family there, so it seemed. They were like neighbors or something in the hospital. And, um, you know, as I say, you know, Boketov, good morning, how are you, etc. cordial. And at some point, it became apparent to the, um, the neighbors that this fellow is Jewish. And surprisingly, the next day or two days later, whatever it was, the lady walks around and she's wearing a mug and dove. And this guy was convinced that these are echte goyim, real goyim, and he's surprised that they were where Shalei's wearing a mug and dove. And it was apparent to him that the reason she was wearing the mug and dove is because she wanted him to say something about the mug and dove. And um, fine, so he says something about the mug and dove to her at some time, and she says to him, that you should know that I'm 73% Jewish. Okay. And uh, she tells him that she's actually from a foreign country and um, she was brought up as a Catholic and her mother on her deathbed called her over and whispered in her ear that she's Jewish. And even though I brought you up as a Catholic, you should know that you're Jewish. This is a story that happened 10 years ago. We're not talking about a story that happened, you know, uh, 100 years ago. And um, my parents were in the Inquisition, etc. And you make sure you tell your children, your daughters out also that they're Jewish. And then her mother died. And they set this lady reeling that she was brought up as a good Catholic, and now she finds out that she's a Jew. That's what her mother tells her on her deathbed. And she was caught off balance. I don't have a better word to use than that she was caught off balance. She didn't really know what to do with herself. How do you um, deal with this issue? And she went to the library and she started reading and she uncovered on the Nazis and she uncovered in the Inquisition and she covered and she uncovered and she uncovered. And um, she's telling over the story why she's 73% Jewish. And um, she decided that this is the real religion and she became a Jews for J worshiper. Nothing like a story with a good ending to it. So what would you people say to this lady? Let's just start over there. What would you say to this lady? Mr. Gross, what would you say? You have to turn on your vote. You have to turn on your thing. You're, you're a speaker. I would have a dilemma. Okay, to tell her that you're not Jewish, I'm destroying her. Tell her that you're that you're 73%. There's no such a thing. So I don't know. I would avoid it. Okay, okay, no, it's you agree that it's a question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not a Jewish question, it's a human question. Maybe. What is maybe being Jewish um, uh, demands a response? By the way, just on that, on that question, maybe the Jewish uh, response. I don't know what 73% Jewish is, but um, 
where I come from, either you're 100% or 0%. There's no 73% as far as I know, right? So when somebody says they're 73% Jewish, the chances are that they're not. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Yisrael? That's 100% true, right? No, but we don't know the story why she's 70%. I'm sure she gave an explanation. Oh. So then yeah. she said she, she did she did a, a genetic a genetic testing. She didn't even do a geolo genealogical one. She did genetic testing, and she has uh, seventy three percent Jewish blood in her. So we have no idea. And the person actually he asked me today says, "Do I have an obligation to pursue this and find out if she really is Jewish or not?" But anyways, let's put this that that part of the story aside. You know, that's like a very technical halachic. How do we, let's say she was 100% Jewish. How are we supposed to respond to this lady? If she is actually Jewish and we consider her Jewish because she's 73% Jewish, then we let's should- Let's say we know she's Jewish, she's Jewish. She says, I know I'm 100% Jewish. I checked it out. My mother's 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 mother all the way up, you know, till, till, till sorry, Emmanuel. So we should you know, try to- we should try to uh, to to um, in, uh, uh, encourage her to to uh, you know in the in the actual Jewish religion, not the uh, the J religion. Yeah, was well, a you know um, okay okay, but how do we you know you understand their connection? It's not like they have like a, what are you supposed what are you supposed to respond? How are you supposed to respond to this? This is a question. Um, that I'm posing to you. And I think it's a, it's a good question. I don't, obviously there is no the right answer and there is no the wrong answer. We have to find a way, I'm gonna tell you what this person said. Can I watch it? I didn't hear that, whoever it was. Anyways, um, the, this person said, he said that, you know, it's really a wonderful thing. A person finds out after all this time, you know, blah, 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 and um, they go searching for the truth. And then you make a colossal mistake. The same mistake, more or less, you know, you're back to where you started. You know, he's near the Jewish religion. You're at your age and you're willing to make a change in your life. And you made the wrong change. And she was stunned. Just how could it be that Jay is not for real? You know, this is she was brought up with this her whole life, etc. And um, he, Thomas, he took a gamble, the guy. And he said, um, "Oh, people have all kinds of motivation, and it's all not true." And she says, "You know, the person who converted me, he at one time was an Orthodox rabbi." And if an Orthodox rabbi could come to this religion, it must be true. Wow. This is a true story. Wow. And he, this fellow, he just um, a stab. I'm telling you what happened. He took a stab in the dark and he said, if he's an Orthodox rabbi and he turned to this religion, he probably had some motivation. I want you to think about all your encounters with him. And does money answer the question? This guy comes from Brooklyn, right? <laughs> and he said, you could see the lady steaming. This was their initial um, interaction. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, there was never pursued further. And um, I was very troubled by his response. You know, we're what's called a, a Monday morning quarterback, if not mistaken, that's what it's called where I come from. You know, I don't know what I would have done if I was in his situation. I'm not, I'm not right now judging what he did. I'm right now judging, did he do the right thing? You know, I'm not, I'm not judging him. I'm, what, what can we take out of this story? That's, that's the question. Okay, I'm going to share with you, nobody over here asked me such derecherts I have, 
What does this have to do with Parsha's boy? Right? I'm going to answer that question. There's a can I get Arba Bonim Dibratoiro? Echa Chochom, Echa Drosha, Echa Tam, Echa Jende Elisho. In this week's Parsha, we have the Parsha of the Rosha. I'm going to read to you the words of the Parsha of the Rosha, and I'm going to share with you an observation of Shamshan Parsh. Wow, what does this? Your children are going to say to you, What's this avoid that you're doing? Okay, that's the that's it. That's the whole Russia. Now, one of the questions that we is even mentioned in the Haggadah, which is a fascinating question. We say, we say that, um, what do we answer? We, what do we tell the Russia? What do we tell the Russia? Anybody remember from the Haggadah? Akei Yoshinov. Ba'avur Zeh. Asa Hashem Li. Asa Hashem Li. Bitsayisi, leave it alone. Okay, so the answer is we don't answer the Russia. We turn to the others. And we we um, say negative things about the Russia. What kind of answer is that? Anybody? Want, hello, did I ever you ever hear about the Lela Seder? Should I introduce you, he's, people? He's, he's for Fallen. He's for Fallen. He's he's if he's in Russia. So therefore, he's not going to listen to you anyways. So no matter what answer you give him, it, it makes no difference. So therefore, then you give him a, a random answer. It won't make any difference. He's not going to listen anyways. So what is the Baal HaGadah teaching us? That when you're not heard, you shut up. If you're not heard, then you shut up. Okay, but that's not what he says. He answers. I would like to share with you an incident that happened, yeah. which is a, an amazing incident. Uh, well, in my opinion, a truly amazing incident. And um, there's what to be learned from this incident. I have a friend of mine that his father is a Er Lechayit. That was such a big time with Chacham. He was a Er Lechayit. And he was walking past a college campus. And there was a missionary preaching to the Jewish students. And he understood that he's no match for this professional preacher. And he also understood that the Jewish boys and girls are going to get sucked in. So what do you do? So he used his Jewish brain. This has happened in the 1960s. This wouldn't work today. Every Jewish boy knew what shechalas are, what candles are, what cholent is. This was, everybody knew. No knew whether you were religious or not, but we're all, we're all Jewish. We all knew the, the you know, the Aser Sadibris, you have to eat cholent on Shabbos, and you have to eat matzah brayan Pesach, and you have to eat cheesecake on Jewish. I mean, the important halachas they know. You know that's a double portion, right? So, um, the guy is going on and on. So he walks over to the guy next to him and says, what about chong? Did he explain chong? Now, the guy next to him didn't want to feel stupid. He said, no, he didn't say anything about chong. He said, ah, he doesn't know about chong? And he asked the next guy, do you know about chong? The kid, sir. And he started a chant from the crowd what about chong what about chong now this guy 
He never learned about Charles. In the Second World War, when the B-52 bombers would invade, so the Germans, they would intercept their radio messages and they would tell them to drop their bombs in the wrong places. And when the allies realized what was happening, so they had to make sure that they, the radio guy on the other side was really an American and not a, you know, not a, not, not a German. So one of the questions that they would ask, you know, when the guy says, you know, drop me about here, he'd say, so who won the World Series in 1967, 1937? Any soldier who didn't know who won the World Series in 1937, drop a bomb on him, right? I mean, he's, 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 he's done it, right? But these Germans, they know who won the World they didn't know World Series, they don't know anything, right? So they used to use standard American ideas, and this is the way they would test the person to find out if he is a, uh, you know, if he's a spy or not. Nowadays, they could probably Google it too fast, and you'd never be able to get away with it. But uh, at any rate, this is what was done in the 1940s. So now, the guy who learned to be a a a uh, convert expert learned all about the dogma of Yiddishkeit, but Cholin, you don't learn that. And he left the booth, his soapbox, the Boishas Punim. That's what happened. The confidence in the Tibor, what about Cholin? The guy knew nothing about Cholin. And that was the end of it. The end. So this is not a spoof. This is a real story that happened to a friend of mine's father. That's what he did. It's a fast, fantastic idea. The Russia, who's a Russia, why is he a Russia? Why is he a non believer? Why are there non believers? The reason why they are non believers is because if you're a believer, it's a machayev. And I don't want to be mechoyev. I want to do what I want. And if I understand that if I, if I be a believer, I'm not going to be able to do what I want. So I don't want to be a believer. So I'll go and I'll find all kinds of tirutzim and all kinds of dogmas to explain away why Yiddishkeit is wrong. Loi avdu b'nei they didn't believe in any of that, but it wasn't a good excuse. So this friend of mine, he took a stab and he said, money. He happened to hit the nail on the head. Now, um, uh, you, you, saw her, you saw Halper, we cannot hear you because your microphone is off. So if you're not, if you're talking to me, I can't hear you. What, you what does it mean? About, I don't see what it means by money. We, he said that the rabbi who converted you, he's why he became part of that religion, is for money. He had a lot and to he, gain. He had a lot to well, gain. Is that it? He, yeah. There is money involved? That's what, that's what this guy made this accusation about a fellow which he didn't know. And the lady basically said that that that's really true. It's like Pesel Micha. Same yeah, idea. Right. right. Now, um, the, the, the fellow, this friend of mine, he said to me that the lady was a gasp. And she said to him, you're not scared to say those things? I mean, do you know who you're speaking about? Do you know what he can do to you? And he said, absolutely nothing. She, he can't get out of where he is no matter how hard he tried. And she couldn't believe, this he's telling me that this, this guy, this acquaintance of mine was so secure in his belief 
that at the end of their interaction, she said she has to rethink it. This is a true story that happened. The Russia. Why is he a Russia? What did we say? Why is the Russia a Russia? Because we want to be bound by mitzvahs. That's right. Ellie, you understand that, right? Okay. Not insinuating anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyways, so he doesn't want to be bound to mitzvahs. When you go and you show him that you are so 100% sure about what you're doing that he's not even worth it to speak to, you got him where it hurts. Not only do we not answer him, but we say that question, that's not even a question. And he is flustered and steaming that we aren't concerned about his concerns. And we are so sure of ourselves. Not only do we get the people around us to be guarded from the Russia, that's how we reach out to the Russia. That's how we reach out to the Russia. Now, for those of you who are businessmen, I'm gonna share with you a uh, difficulty in the world of business. I don't know if you know, I'm a big time businessman. A person has a customer and the customer has an unjustified complaint. Sometimes you say, you know what, I'll give it to the customer anyways. Sometimes you say, this is a long spool of yarn. If I'm going to start over here, I'm never going to get out of here. And I have to hold my guns and say that I'm right. There's a whole, you know, and the person has to make the, the, the uh, evaluation, what is the best way to deal with the customer? One of the rules of these kinds of negotiations is don't give some kind of something which shows that you have a guilty conscience. Because then not only will you lose out on whatever you gave, you lost the customer. You have to give the presence and make it appear that you are confident in what you're doing, that, we, that you are 100% right. That's the olive. Then you have to figure out how to make, how to make the customer satisfied. But if you're going to be uh, you know, you not, so, not so sure-footed, no matter what you do, you're going to lose. Okay, anybody over here could uh, validate that, that that's, uh, that's the way it goes? Okay, so, so this is what's happening. We tell the others, it's not worth the trouble to answer him. Not only, not only will they not be affected, but he himself may come around. He himself will come around. It's a fascinating answer. This is the answer of Sean Paul Hirsch said. Now, there's somebody over here which was a pessimist. First, I would like to quote one Hasidic Shavart, and then I'd like to quote another Hasidic Shavart. What in the world is the Russia doing by the Seder? Mr. Gross, you don't like that question? He's hungry. He wants a meal. <laughs> you must be Jewish. <laughs> you didn't That's the wrong you. meal to come to. He's got to wait a couple hours before he eats. Yeah. Well, okay. That's why. What's, the, what's, what's the Russia doing there by the Seder? Why is he in Russia again? Uh, no, that's what it says. The Torah called him that, right? Not me. But why do we call him a Russia? What did he do wrong? He is a he is a koifer. Let's just call it like that. But but not in ev know? but not in everything. How otherwise he know? otherwise he wouldn't be here this night. Okay, you fell into it. That's exactly what I would like to um, go against. 
we live in Israel. I don't know if you people are aware of that. And I would like to share with you um, something which was broadcasted on the radio probably by now 30 years ago, or 25 years ago, and a friend of mine heard this broadcast. A fascinating, a fascinating uh, situation. They had a Choser B'Sheila on the radio. I'm sure you all know where the Choser B'Sheila is. That's not a person who became uh, irreligious. It's two o'clock in the morning, and the disc jockey asks him, so what do the Haredim think about the secular Jews? And there's silence from this Jose Bishela. And the disc jockey says, you know, no, you know, what's your answer? So he said the truth. They don't think about the secular Jews. They're not consumed with that issue. But the disc jockey is a good disc jockey. So he says, and if they think about them, what do they think about? So the guy stops to think again. And he says, Miskenim. I think that everybody here understands what just happened. Why is it that the secular Jews are concerned about the Haredim and the Haredim are not concerned about the secular Jews? Anybody want to answer? Maybe it's Salim, guilt. You want to answer? It's guilt. It's guilt. Okay. They, they, they know the correct path. They just won't take it. Correct. Correct. And we are not concerned with Shaker. There's nothing there. We have no reason to go there. You want to know why the Russia is there? He can't get away from it. The bigger the Russia, the more it bothers him. Why do you think all the world is against the Jews? At large, you know, I'm not really speaking about it, but why is that the case? Guilt. We're not against the guy. Mr. Felkov, did I answer you? There are a lot of people watching, not to my satisfaction, no. Okay, okay. Uh, can you tell me why not? I don't mind a lot of people watching. No, but I do. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> okay, I appreciate your sensitivity for me. Anyways, um, so th this, is, this is the Aleph. So we say over here, we tell the Russia backhandedly by telling the others and we are secure in that which we're doing that's why he's there the chassidim say the chassidim say that uh the russia's there he deserves to be answered he's there he's oppressed he's confused he's sputtering he deserves to be answered we have to know how to answer but the Gdele Chassidim say, unless I say there, you could even win over the Russian. Could be on another night, you won't be able to. But Lela say there has a special power, and we can overcome even, even the Russia. There's a vort, I want to say this in conclusion. And then I speak about the Chacham, and then we're going to tie this all together. The end of the partial, we have Yom Lecha Benechem, Abor Eslochem, and Benog Tzeh Betenu Yitzil, Vayikoy Ra'om Vayishtachavu. Klai Yisrael heard that they're going to be redeemed, that they're going to ask, and they're going to answer, and they hear this Besura Toiva, and they bow down 
thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Says Rashi, Vayikar Ha'om al Bisura Sa'gaula, that they're going to be redeemed, Ubiya Sa'aretz, and they're going to go into Eretz Yisrael, Ubisura's Barim Sheyilahem, that they're going to have children with Shoyim. Hello? That's what I just said. We just right now learned the parish of Russia. And we hear that they're going to have children with Shoyim. Great news! Ellie, why are you smirking at me? What's the answer to the question? So why is that great news? I don't, I'm telling you, that's, I'm asking. I right? think they were they were just happy they were going to have children. All right, all right. So do you? Do, I, I'm asking you a question right now. Is it better to not have children or to have children that are delinquent? They can always be brought in. Children. I could do do competition. I can't do that. Hmm. Okay, I heard what you said, Mel. Somebody else said something. What did somebody else say? Torah says you have to have children. It's not for you to uh, make a determination what they're going to be. You do, you do the best Excellent. you can. You have to have children. Okay, okay. I'm going to get to you in a second, Mel. I want to answer Ellie. You have to do your mitzvah. I didn't ask why did they have children. I said why did they bow down on the besura that they're going to have children that are Rishon? I didn't ask what they should do. I asked a different question. And I think that, Mel, what you answered is the answer to the question. That's what we just learned right now. Even the Russia, the reason why he's there is because it ain't over. We could bring him back. There is no such place that a Jew could go. The Abishta could call him a Russia, and we could turn him around. That's what it says over here. That's what we just learned. We can turn them around. Now, um, the you know it's getting late. I just say over the piece. Uh, we we'll guess we'll skip the the chacham. We'll just go to the rasha. The rasha says, "What are you doing now?" And we answer him about something historical. The Russia is living very self-centered in the here and now. He's not willing to understand that he's part of a running event. That's part of the reason that he has the freedom. He's not shackled with history and a responsibility for the future. And when we tell him, if you would have been there, you wouldn't have been redeemed, what we did was connect the present with the past. When you connect the present with the past, <clears throat> your understanding of life becomes different. This is part of the answer. If you would have been there, you wouldn't have gone out. Makes it for real. This is just, I guess, part. We don't have much the time to go into the other thing. Okay, so we'll stop over here. And um, you should all have a great Shabbos. Nice to see you all.